Guys, just want to talk about something I picked up on earlier. I was, I was uh, watching Ben Shun's channel and he brought up something that's quite an interesting one relating to uh, young men and being lonely. Um, I would actually say, he's correct. I would say when guys are younger, they're trying to find a way in the world. So as such, even if you're forward planning, you're still at the beginning of that journey and a lot of the stuff that we are focused on through media and whatever is about being a couple. So as such, the focus is predominantly on relationships and maybe focused on career, but relationships still takes a huge chunk of time, etc. And also where people don't want to be alone. And it's is it insecurity? I'd say some of it's insecurity, but some of it is the lack of experience of many things. But I also find that in your younger years, it's harder for a male than it is for a female. I mean, what you're looking at is a shift with females. I mean, the, the town I was living in, in my teens, um, you have ladies' nights. So at least three nights a week, ladies' nights. Ladies don't pay for drinks, they don't pay for club entrances, they don't pay for nothing. Where did that extra money come from? The guys, obviously. The guys are paying more than the, the going away for drinks, they're paying for entry into all the clubs, etc. And for people that may not even meet, in the sense that the ladies' drinks are free, but those ladies may not even be with you. So you're paying for drinks for people you're not even socializing with, which is all a, all a bit weird and skewed. Um, but at the same time, that is the state of Western society, that imbalance is, is already occurring. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is uh, Benjamin made a very good point relating to when you're getting older. It's like myself. I'm fairly independent financially. I, I'm financially stable. Um, although I, I have a family and whatever, at the same time, I, I am not um, reliant on anybody else. And although I, I have my responsibilities, if I was a single guy, I would still be financially viable. I would still be able to um, function very easily. And that's one of the important things. When people get older, women are doing the reverse because they're a lot more confident when they're younger because they want to get a lot of experience and things out of their system before they settle down. When they hit the 40s, 50s or whatever, they don't want to be alone. They don't want to be some old spinster with talking to the cat. Um, they want to be in a relationship. Now, guys on the other hand, become more content as they get older because they've experienced things and realize they don't need all this stuff going on. Um, as you look at uh, Vention, you'll see that he does things like fixing his car and doing stuff around the garden. I'm the same. Um, I was at the, I mean, I don't know if any of you guys follow me on Instagram, but you're still at the garden centre the other day. I wouldn't be doing that in my twenties. <laughs> but I'm interested in plants. I'm interested I mean, I'm writing some ebooks at the moment. I'm interested in developing things and that's the difference with guys. When they get to a certain maturity, I can't say age because it differs from person to person. They do actually no longer require the need of anybody else, um, unless they choose to. That's the thing. I mean, that's the thing when people are, oh, yeah, you're sad, lonely, blah, blah, blah. Guys generally aren't. You find, like, even um, in the UK, there's this thing called shed clubs where they actually do stuff in the community. Guys meet up together to make stuff um, for schools or whatever you know the whole point is it's woodworking it's metalworking it's all these bits and pieces to keep people occupied my father for example my mother passed away recently um he's he's always out about doing photography he's not sat at home moping around wishing something would come along or whatever he's out doing photography yeah and i think that's that's the important bit here because as he, uh, Benjamin was bringing up, you know, when, when he tells people he's got MGTOW and not interested, he does get people go, well, you must be this, you must be that. The answer to that is no. <laughs> That's, that is the bizarre thing, is once you get to a certain point in your life, you can be very content 
just dealing with yourself most of the time because there is stuff to do. It's like friends of mine are dogs. I mean, they treat their dogs like kids. I've got to admit, like, admit that, but they're single guys and they still do construction work even though they're, well, they are at retirement age. But you'll hear them talking to the dogs as if they're human beings and they do treat them as human beings. And the funny thing is you get the looks from the dogs as if they understand everything that they're being told, etc. But are they sad? Are they lonely? No, neither. Neither. The, the thing they are is content. They don't want a... I mean, their ways have died. They're an older generation anyway before a lot of the destruction <laughs> happened to Western society. So they're an older generation. Um, but they're, they're content with what they have. They're always busy. They're always pottering around. They open small businesses. I mean, one of them does um, paint. He mix, he's got a paint mixing machine, and he just potters around doing it. He doesn't need to work there. He doesn't need the work. He, he's got no debts. He's completely debt-free. The paint business, he bought cash. Um, he just potters around. It's the same as we ended up friends because he owned the house next door to my place in the UK. And he just left it empty because after he bought it, he realized that there was no financial um, benefit to actually renovating and selling it because it was all going to go on tax because he earns too much already. So he just left it. <laughs> he just left it. So it's like his back wall collapsed. And it, you know, so... But, I mean, that's the madness in the UK sometimes. You know, you've got too much money, so you're not entitled to actually renovate the house. You don't need to live in it. He's got another house anyway, but it was just the right price. And he bought it, and then it's like, I'm not even going to get back what I paid for it when I sell it, because they, well, then it spikes his tax. But anyway, going off on a tangent. But that's the point. Guys can be content. Uh, and you will get people actually say, well, you must be sad, you must be lonely, you must be this, you must be that. Nah, nah. And it, it's also why I say be younger, travel. Travel has got to be the, the one thing that will jump you ahead 10, 20 years uh, in your knowledge and experience. Because a lot of people, even now I see it in the Philippines where people are just arriving from the Philippines, uh, into the Philippines. And they've never been anywhere else before. They've they've never even been in the Philippines as a first trip, and these guys are in their sixties or whatever. And you're thinking, I I couldn't go through life without traveling. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Even even when I'm working in the UK, you, you, I mean, if you follow the stuff I do in the UK, I travel around a lot. You know, I've got something coming through at the moment because I may be actually going back to the UK for three months. Um, but the point being is. It's all over the place. Same with working in the Middle East, working in Asia, working wherever. It's I can't lock myself into the nine to five that a lot of people do um, to be content. I, I've got to admit, here in Spain at the moment, I'm seriously thinking about getting a small holding um, because I'd like to have a small farm. Um, but the wife's not too keen on that because uh, worrying about robberies and things um, so we're, we're thinking about it but that, that's a prime example you know it's, it's setting yourself up to be in an environment that makes you happy and that's what a lot of older guys do because they haven't got <clears throat> I mean a lot of guys have had the problems with um, divorce where it's not just hammering for the money the money is a obviously a primary problem but also there's a lot of emotional drain as well with dealing with the frustrations, the manipulations and everything else and the stress of not knowing how much things are really going to cost or coming out of there and then getting the legal fees for the ex as well as you and all this sort of crap. Um, so there's a lot of stuff once you get out, out and past that. You're like, I know, this is me time now. I've done all that. Don't want any more of that hassle. Don't want to go through the same again. Um, and that's where I think a lot of MGTOW are coming from. At the end of the day, I understand completely. And even then, the, the opportunities, if somebody actually did want a girlfriend or whatever, you have to question, is it companionship? Because if it's companionship, then there's plenty of other guys out there. You know, a companionship doesn't, doesn't involve anything sexual, what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
I, if you want somebody to go on photography tours with you or help you build stuff or whatever, it's, it's more of a guy thing anyway. Um, but if it is a need for a relationship, even then, there's a lot of women out there that have come out of relationships and they're often, like I said, better off. But at the same time, it's also what makes them undesirable. <laughs> It's, it's knowing they've done something previously and I've got to admit there's, there's been a couple of instances of myself where I've been in relationships and there's been certain things said you know when the relationship's really strained and you're already half out the door anyway and then there's certain things that are said you just thought yeah today's the day because there are certain things where it's taken from like the, the word right, the word right is a prime one. Um, there is no recognition of responsibility, respect, um, impact. It becomes a, I have a right, regardless if it's right or wrong. Because it's not a right, it's a privilege. And this, will, this is why I separate the two, because right gets used for everything. and somebody paying somebody alimony is a privilege it's not a right because at the end of the day it's a privilege because if that person decided never to work again you can have a right to it but you'll never receive it so receiving it is a privilege because they're actually working to pay it there's nothing to say that that guy couldn't get on a plane and head off to the philippines or whatever and i know guys that have and it wasn't because they were uh, bad guys or whatever. I mean, the one guy, he his wife had basically bankrupted his company because of the interference from her lawyer. And she did it in a very spiteful and evil way on purpose. Um, and then, hello, the guy's not here anymore. The business is gone. He's not writing any checks anymore. He can't pay me. What do I do now? But up to that point, she hated him. You know, she she got the five kids, getting divorced, unhappy, bitter, all this sort of stuff, and she just wanted to be spiteful and pretty much evil on it, in the sense of used used and abused to the max. But when she finally broke broke the camel's back, she she's then sitting there going, "It's still his fault. Still his fault. He couldn't pay his bills because the lawyer." had to authorize any payments and he would separate the bills um, for what our business costs and what is what he deemed was the expenses personal expenses of the individual now he doesn't work at the company so what happens is all that paperwork and checks had to be approved before they could be, be, be paid which could be 60 days as such, many of these suppliers, contractors, etc., stopped working with him because, although he had the money, he couldn't pay them because this woman's lawyer, he got so embedded in their life that he had no control over his own finances anymore. And uh, quite likely, right, like, rightly, um, I would have done the same as him and just said, you know what, there you go, have the company, have everything, goodbye, and just hop on a plane. And then she sat there going, well, you can't do this. What, what gives you the right to do this? I've got more power over you than God. You know, this sort of petty, evil woman. Um, and that's when you realize how sick Western society is. Because it, it was actually destructive to herself. Yet even then, she did not blame herself for it. She blamed him for it. She blamed him for leaving and not being enslaved. So my personal view is if you're young, don't do anything stupid, travel, experience things. You won't be lonely. Once you experience the world's views, when you see um, s stuff that other people will never see in their lifetime, um, that alone gives you a sense of belonging, a sense of well-being, a sense of... Um, experience 
because you've already done something many people never do. But then if you enhance that with things like riding a motorbike across um, the Sahara or something else, if you want to go down that route, you're also doing something that 99.9% .9 of the population will never do. And that's one of the things I do like about traveling, is the fact is you can open yourself to everything. I've got to admit, I am one for going off tourist trails. Um, I'm not one of these ones that do the package holidays and stuff like that. Um, I am more of a person that will go somewhere than go everywhere else that beyond what everybody else is doing because it's where you find the little unique things and experience local cultures and stuff that aren't trying to sell you their brochures and museum access etc. You're dealing with the real people doing the real stuff which is the stuff I like um, unless it's historic and I'm into architecture as well. That's part and parcel of coming from construction and surveying. Um, but when you're young, realize that you don't need to be with anybody. What you need is to enhance your life, set yourself up for a long-term uh, environment. But that starts with actually understanding what you want to do. And one of the things I did, I mean, I told my daughter this, though she doesn't take take much notice of it. I was telling her to learn Excel inside out because I'm, I'm pretty good with Excel because um, there's always a demand for it. You can work anywhere in the world doing that sort of stuff because data manipulation is used for everything. And although a lot of things are put through databases and um, utilized for many things, a lot of time they need it in spreadsheet form and manipulating the data because a lot of stuff I do is actually pre-done in Excel before it goes into computer systems anyway to get it in the right uh, formats and the right calculations etc and that that's a lifelong skill because at the end of the day those sort of things are something you can use to make money anyway they're also things that um, you can learn anywhere and allows you to travel anywhere at the same time if you're not sure where you want to be in life picking up on something like that just focus on stuff that makes money later on focus on what you like to do and want to do in the sense of work um, because if you're generating cash anyway a lot of stuff I do um, and I don't share most of the stuff I, I do I miss mean, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day about this uh, uh, David um, and I shared one of the things I get up to and he was like ah oh, that's very clever and I said yeah one of the things I don't share it about because it's a niche market in part and parcel of having niches is not telling everybody where everything is. It's because the homework was already done. You, at the same time, that's what other people need to do, is find these things themselves. Um, because it generates money and has done for the seven years now. $1,000 a month for seven years, fully automated. Um, but the point being is, designing that was not my career move. Designing that was purely financial. What you got from it was the ability to travel and do things that you want to do, or if you want to take time out and actually develop your career, you can because you create the financial environment that allows you to do that. Because when you're young, one of the problems you are chasing is money. And this is what I was saying, this is why the ladies' drinks and stuff is important, because you're being ripped off. You're being ripped off. You're seen as the the um, easily manipulated guy that is desperate to meet women and all this sort of stuff. Sidestep it. Women will meet up with you anyway. If you expand your real world scenarios instead of focus on nightclubs and stuff like that, you will find you come across better women for a start. Um, but also, don't lock yourself in. Because I'll tell you what, the one thing that I find most women find attractive with men, which this is from my own experience, is being unavailable. Because <laughs> if you're not interested in unavailable, they are assuming there is something <laughs> that they're not doing right, not the fact that you're just not interested. Um, but it seems to draw more, more interest by simply saying, look, I'm not interested in a relationship. I'm not, you know, I'm married anyway. But I mean, even before that, I was just like, I just want a peace, peace and quiet. 
Um, yeah. So, if you're younger, experience life, but don't lock yourself into the failings. Um, look to generate some long-term income. And if you're uh, older, find what makes you content. If you haven't already, because I, I mean, a lot of MGTOW guys are already content anyway. They understand exactly what I'm talking about. Um, like myself, if if I was single right now, there's, I could give you five things off the top of my head I would actually be doing. My drone flying, photography, um, gardening, definitely, aquaponics, and writing books on nuts. See, one of the things that does bug me, and I've got to be... <laughs> It's been bugging me for a while. It's zombie movies are really bad, and survival movies are really bad. Um, and it, it's got worse. That's got worse for recent years. And I sit here with my wife, because I can't watch any of that mainstream stuff, because I don't understand where these people sit there and talk about their emotions and worry about what somebody's thinking or whatever. Because I'm not being funny in that environment. Unless you're actually in that long lull, which is where you've gone through a traumatic experience and then suddenly in a very, very safe environment to the point that you can just go over what happened earlier, you're not going to sit and have a conversation about how little Billy feels about somebody else and how they spoke to the mother. I think there is some... <laughs> See, I'm trying not to be anti, anti-female anti in that sense. But I do think there's too many female writers in that that have never been in those environments. Because a lot of people shut down. They don't sit there and talk to you about this stuff. They lock it up. You get into these situations, you, you don't sit there and com- converse with people about it. You lock, you lock yourself up. You do not. You do not share those things. They're your thoughts. It's the same as um, people in conflict zones. You may get them talk to other people that have been in the same situation, but generally it's not not something that would just sit and randomly talk to people about. And I find that a lot of these survival movies and stuff are now focusing on the relationships between different people. But in that environment, it ain't going to happen. There's too many things going on. If it's a, if it's a lull bet- um, before the storm, or you've just come out of something, like for example, you've moved from a town to another, it's like the, one of things like washing laundry. Supermarkets are full of clothes. You don't do a laundry, you don't need to. You, you just go and get more clothes. You take a stack and then you just sort of throw them away and get new ones every time you, you come across a new supermarket. Um, but it's the same with things like you'd be focused on food, power, root, shelter, etc., etc. You're not focusing on whether your little Jimmy's okay and he seems a little bit stressed. Uh, well, guess what? Everybody's stressed. The world is coming to an end. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of the things I do want to actually write. It's a zombie book, and I've actually ordered some survival books as well, um, just to pick some of the stuff. Um, Because I used to cover it quite a lot when I was younger. Um, But things like the... There's been stuff upgraded. There's there's different ways of doing things now. And I'm I'm just trying to get my head around it because I might write a book on it. But there you go. And you may go, well, that book may may be garbage and may not be published. But you know what? It's not about that. It's about doing something I like doing. And that, that, that for me, is all all that matters. And that's the thing. This is where, where... the older generation guys may get hassled going, well, you must be sad because you're living on your own and lonely. It's like, no, content. These guys predominantly are content because they've got stuff to keep themselves occupied and busy. They're not, they're not getting involved in petty stuff. They're involved in stuff that has meaning and value to them. As such, they can sidetrack everything. They, can, they don't have to get involved in all this stuff. I mean, the, the primary function of being with a female is not about companionship. It's about breeding. That is the primary role. So if you're at an age where you're not really wanting kids or looking to 
um, looking to have that environment, then why would you be sad and lonely? You'd be sad and lonely if you spend all your time on the internet and not looking at doing other things outside of that. That's sad and lonely because it's 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 locking you into often what other people are doing and not what you're doing. Um, I mean, one of the things I do have is lots of books. So even when I'm even when I'm not on the computer, I have always got something. I'm either writing or reading. Um, but like I said, one thing I would say about MGTOW is the guys I've spoken to, the guys I've met, they're guys that have had bad experiences, but at the same time, they're not sad, they're not lonely, they're not bitter. What they actually are is just having independence and self-reliance and confidence in themselves. It's not a weak movement. It's not a. Um, it's not a group of people that have no responsibilities or recognition. Because responsibility is something that was brought up as well. Um, responsibility is based on choice as well. I do think that we were talking about this guy that dumped the kids and ran in the Philippines. Now, my view on that is different to uh, ventures on this because I, I do believe that. If you have children, then you're responsible for them. Now, the argument being that if the woman had decided to do this, um, and not the guy had nothing to do with it sort of thing, then that would be one thing, but as there was two kids involved, it wasn't an accident. <laughs> um, in the same way, I do know there was a Dutch guy I met in the Philippines. I stood in the taxi line at Alamal, just standing there, and he's, this guy was nearly 80, and he said, you know what, my, wife, my girlfriend's pregnant. And he found out that the doctor had been selling placebos as birth control. So there's lots of scenarios where, <laughs> where um, unplanned things happen. But a guy with two kids is not unplanned at all. Um, but then taking the kids to dump on another woman and running back to the US. That that says it all, you know, and I do find that sort of guy an embarrassment to the human race, never mind just to guys. Because it's the, it's the exact reason that they use legal systems against uh, men because of people like that. Because like anything in the media, they focus on the worst case scenario as the norm. And he is, probably the worst case scenario is left these two kids in a third world country. Um, for me, yes, uh, and I'm well aware of this, I think it's about 10,000 um, kids up in Manila alone that have Western fathers that have basically disappeared. Um, but at the same time, we have to accept we have responsibility from both sides. Um, See, getting see the Philippines is too easy to to have kids from a guy's point of view and dump the responsibility onto the women. You've got to understand that there are still disputes relating to birth control in the Philippines because of the church. You also got to understand Catholic teachings, which does not include birth control um, beyond their rhythm methods and all this other weird stuff that doesn't actually work. Um, but it's tied with beliefs and other things. Now, if we're better educated and have more information and are not interested in having kids, then I do think we have an obligation to avoid that. Um, this guy obviously knew what he was doing and he just treats the Philippines like a candy shop and he's just swapping from woman to woman. Um, I assume he's gone back to the US because I don't know if he'll have I don't know if he's, I mean, it must be at pension age. I mean, the bizarre thing is, I'm not even sure if he had a job because he's got a, a criminal record. So if he was in jail for a period of time, what job has he held? Anyway, long story. Um, but yeah, uh, for me, responsibility is responsibility yourself. 
And part and parcel of that is like that, if the guy had no intention of staying with a woman, he should simply not be having any kids. You cannot pass the responsibility purely onto the, the woman. And the obligation may have been that the woman's expectation of it being a permanent relationship and at that time, the guy may have been selling it as that. He just had no um, moral compass in a positive way. You know, his rap sheet had, has burglary on it for a start, which I find is one of the lowest of the low crimes. Um, stealing, from, stealing from other people is, is, is low. Um, stealing from corporations, it's not, it's not good, <laughs> but I, it's, I, I have a bit more leniency on that side, uh, purely because they get better tax breaks and other stuff. Um, but anyway, and it's what's classed as a, what's it, non, uh, there's not non-victim crime they class it as because it's covered by insurance. So that's why I have a bit more leniency on that, but at the same time, you're robbing from people's houses. I'm not gonna say what I would like to do to those types of people, but there won't be a lot of them around. But anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. This is probably one of the longest videos I've napped on about. Um, so thanks for watching. Bye.